joined back in 2005, had the great fortune of meeting Carol and Anthony Bamford, and it struck me then, back in 2005, just how driven and passionate this woman was about making a real change in British agriculture and the way we see and eat food. My background is basically livestock farming. I'm very passionate about breeding animals that are fit for the environment in which we are farming them. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Dales for Dairy here. And there are some people on this trailer that have heard it several times, and they could probably do this talk as well as I do. But so I, from that, I take that I'm making my point very clearly and that you understand it. So when I joined, there were about 100 dairy cows here, and they were the, of the Holstein genetic, and of course they've been bred um, to fit in well with intensive milk production throughout the world. Uh, and it was very clear to me at that point that Holsteins do not fit into a sustainable organic farming system. So 14 years ago, we started a breeding program within the Holsteins to breed back to what I consider to be a traditional British Frisian. And you're looking at the 13th crop of heifers now. We gained pedigree status uh, back in 2014, I believe it was. Uh, and I'm extremely proud of the cattle that we bred. If you understand dairy cattle, you would know that cattle have been bred to produce a massive amount of milk and that conformation and locomotion and so on have kind of been forgotten. So basically the modern dairy cow, which I think of as the Formula One racing cow of milk production, has been bred to produce milk. She's a skeleton with a skin stretched over, supporting a huge udder. And she can produce in one lactation. And I'm sorry, I'm not telling you how to suck eggs, but you know, they are mammals. They need to give birth to, to start lactating and produce milk. The very modern Holstein cow can provide you with 12,000 litres of milk in one lactation. And the lactation, the perfect lactation, is measured on 305 days. So that cow is having to work at a phenomenal rate to produce that energy from her udder. It's also a fact that the modern dairy cow in this country and right through the Americas and the, 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 the Western world, cows are averaging 2.6 lactations and they're eating four tonnes of high energy compound protein feed that's imported onto the farm to get that milk out of the cow. They've become machines of milk production. It's very important to me that I do not run down any style of agriculture, any farmer, because it's bloody hard work and it's hard to keep your head above water however you're doing it. We merely took a view and we have found this system to be a much higher welfare and far less stressful system to be in the one that is the Formula One red, uh, uh, racing car. So our whole our, our Frisians now are averaging 6,500 litres per lactation and 75% of the cows in the herd are in their sixth lactation or above. We are not quite totally self-sufficient in our feed needs. Each cow receives about 0.5 of a tonne of bought-in cake at the moment and they're on about 0.7 of a tonne of homegrown cereal but I'm pushing hard to get that down to zero and the whole farming system and the ethos at Dalesford is to grow as, as higher quality protein as we can either through forage or cereals within our own farming system. The farm here we farm about 2,900 acres with about 800 acres being rented in and I've put through an organic conversion and we farm a further 2,800 acres up in Staffordshire. I've certainly got no plans to slow down, and I want that to keep growing. Um, the farms are commercially viable. Each enterprise is benchmarked against the very best in agriculture. This is the dairy, obviously, of which now there are 130 cows um, that we are milking. 100% of our milk plus now goes into a state-of-the-art creamery behind me and that's converted into liquid milk. About 20 tonnes of handmade cheese a year and all the dairy products associated around dairy, i.e. yoghurt, butter, um, etc. In addition to the dairy, between the two farms we land 4,500 flin ewes. It's a totally closed flock. Um, I take a particular interest in them and we have a very high health status, so the flock is closed. Every animal that's on the farm, from both maternal and paternal lines, is bred on the farm and that has given us the ability to own the health status um, of the flock. Again, we benchmark ourselves against the best and we're in the top 1% of sheep production in the United Kingdom in this organic system. 
It brings huge pride to me. Obviously, I've been heavily involved from the start, but the farms have grown um, hugely over the last few years, and I rely heavily on my team now to farm to this standard. Um, and just locally, we had a particular uh, uh, source of pride for us all in that we enter all the local farming shows, and at the Morton Farmers Ball last week, we picked up just about every trophy that was available. So of the 200 farmers there, we are the only organic ones, and we win everything, including best large farm and overall champion farm. And what I love about that is, with a slight big-headed tone, um, is that we are independently judged by farmers that are brought in from other parts of the country. So it's a great, um, it's a real credit to the, to the guys and the girls that work on the farm for me. Now, interestingly, the cows behind me, for those that haven't been to Dalesford before, these on my right, these are really, really special cattle. These are one of the rarest breeds of cattle in the world, and this is called the Old Gloucester. You can trace these back to the 13th century, and a family would have kept one of these animals in the byre, at the back of the house. You would have given about 1,500 litres of milk and fattened the calf. Just you'd have provided for a calf and given about 1,500 litres. If you get a really, really good one, you'll get about three to three and a half thousand litres in a lactation. That's why it's a minority breed. That's why it's no longer seen commonly, because it literally can't keep up with, with modern farming techniques and the, you know, the amount of produce or milk that we need to produce to keep our heads above water. In a business like Dalesford, these are fantastically important. Not only are they a great marketing tool, but they're a real demonstration to people that this is where we've come from, the Holstein is where we went to, and our Frisians are where we are sitting in the middle, hopefully with a much more sustainable, high welfare cow. If you got, so remember I said the modern dairy cow averaging 2.6 lactations, Hours, I would say quite confidently, are doing about seven, and I want to keep pushing that out. If one of these cows were left just to have a calf every year and carry on producing milk, you could quite easily expect one of these to get to 18. And I have had one go to 20. So, you know, that longevity of life is in these cattle. So I see them as very important genetics to enhance and hang on to. Because we milk these Gloucester cattle, we're able to make a single Gloucester cheese in the dairy. It's a short maturation of eight weeks, and it sells like hot cakes, and it's a beautiful product, so they do bring something to the party as well. We have an HLS agreement on the farm, and these play a part in this, so rare breed cattle grazing, um, herbridge pastures, and so on, on poorer parts of the farm, and so they really do earn their way at the moment. Going forward with things changing hugely and uh, environmental stewardship payments and subsidies and so on, I don't believe there won't be any subsidies at all, but I think that a farmer really is going to have to provide a public good to obtain money or public money um, in the form of a subsidy. So these guys, I think, have got a real future at Dalesford and they're certainly not going anywhere. The first Gloucesters joined us in 2006. We started with half a dozen. We now have 72 registered females on the farm. I've just noticed actually today that these cattle are just getting a little touch of ringworm and usually I would um, just turn them out shortly and ultraviolet light will sort of get on top of it and it disappears but I've been reading this morning about hanging holly from the rafters. Does anybody do that Patrick? Do you hang holly? Yeah if you if you go to France I've had a couple of, been lucky enough to travel around Europe looking at beef cattle and apparently you hang the of male holly bush and you let it dry out in the rafters and it'll do away with ringworm altogether and I absolutely believe it because I travelled right the way around France and never saw one piece of ringworm in any cattle and those that didn't have holly had ringworm so I don't know why it works but I'm going to go searching for holly bushes now so they'll be a rarity soon on the farm as well <laughs> um, right Simon we'll have a talk we'll just two on down the shed please